maybe we can start by talking a little bit about your research and, and why the gut health is so important. Sure, so, um, you know, the, I, I think we became interested in the gut microbiota from the standpoint of just um, kind of basic pioneering research, trying to understand this new microbial organ that we've discovered inside of us that's incredibly important and connected to so many facets of our health. And over the course of the past 10 years or so, there's been this transformation in understanding this community and how fundamental it is. It's not just a quirky part of our biology. It really is holding the key to health of our immune system, our metabolism. Um, there's a brain-gut axis, so it's dictating moods, behavior, perhaps impacting things like autism and neurodegeneration. So there's, there's really this profound impact this microbial community has on our, on our entire body. Yeah, and just to throw some interesting numbers out there, we're actually, ten by cell number, we actually have 10 times more bacterial cells associated with our body than human cells. And we even have 100 times more bacterial genes associated with our collective genome than human genes. So both by cell number and by gene number, we're actually more microbial than we are human. And so I think the research from our lab and other labs in this area is really redefining how we think of ourselves as human beings. We're not just this collection of human cells. We're, in fact, more like a tube of human cells that houses this incredibly complex and dynamic ecosystem of, of microbes. And what we're finding is that these microbes are wired into pretty much all aspects of our biology. They're really major players in um, many aspects of our health. Yeah, in, in terms of how these you know, bacteria in our gut are regulating health, one thing that comes to my mind um, in particular is, you know, so the, these, this bacteria is in our, our gut and most of it is in the, the distal part, so in the colon. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that our GI tract happens to be also large, the uh, largest number of immune cells. I don't think most people if you were to ask them where, what organ in the human body has the you know, highest concentration of immune cells, people might say the thymus or the spleen or, mm -hmm. no, it's actually the gut. And so that is uh, particularly where I have been interested because there's a very uh, complex interaction between the bacteria in our gut and, these, and the immune cells in our gut. And you guys have you know, done a little bit of research on how diet comes into play into that. So, yeah, so, um, so there are kind of two aspects of that. I think one, you know, it's a little bit daunting to think of these microbes inside of us as dictating so much of our biology, that they actually are, you know, um, holding the reins to some degree on, on our immune system, on our metabolism. On the other hand, our diet directly impacts this community. Our research and the research of others has shown this over and over again. And so really, we hold the reins on what's happening inside our gut by controlling what we eat and aspects of our lifestyle. So um, I think as we gain knowledge about this community, it's possible for us to foster a healthy microbiota to improve our health in many dimensions. Now, the immune system is really interesting because you know the, there's a really delicate balance between our microbiota and our gut um, because living in close proximity are these two entities that um, classically in microbiology were thought not to get along, bacteria and the host immune system. And what we realize is that there's this incredible conversation that's continually ongoing in our gut between our immune system and the gut microbes to maintain harmony in most cases, although this can go awry. But it's, um, so there, there's a delicate balance in, balance in the gut, but also the immune system can leave the gut, those signals can leave the gut and influence our immune system throughout our body. So really these microbes in our gut are dictating the set point of our immune system throughout our body. They can Im impact things like respiratory infections, how well we respond to a vaccine, how rapidly uh, autoimmune disease can progress. And so, um, so it's really, I think, you know, this insight that so much of our immune system is in our gut is really profound and it's important to recognize that this not only impacts what's going on in the gut but throughout our entire body. Absolutely. So the food that we put into our body interacts with these, these gut bacteria and if we feed them certain foods or we don't feed them certain foods this will impact you know the immune system in, in the gut and also in the rest of our body. So specifically, uh, what comes to my mind is the 
dietary fiber that can be metabolized by certain bacteria in the gut into something called short chain fatty acids like butyric acid, propionic acid, acetic acid, lactic acid, um, you, anything else. But, and how these short chain fatty acids um, provide signals to certain immune cells to regulate their, their function, you know, both in a, in, a, in a positive way or also in suppressing your immune system from becoming too active. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit about that? Sure. Well, so the, um, you know, the dietary fiber we eat is really the key for feeding this gut microbial community. And, um, you know, that the point that the microbes in our digestive tract primarily live at the end of the digestive tract is really important because um, so much of the food that we eat in the Western world is um, laden in simple carbohydrates and fats and all of those things get absorbed in the upper GI tract and leave our microbes essentially starving. There's no um, complex carbohydrates to feed this community. And in fact, you know, going back to um, traditional populations of humans that are represented of how we evolved, it's clear that we used to eat as humans much more dietary fiber than we currently eat. So there's really good evidence that in the United States, we're actually starving our microbes. So this is important in, in many respects. Um, one is that when the microbes receive these dietary carbo carbohydrates, these complex dietary fibers that we eat, they make these compounds like short chain fatty acids. That's their metabolism working. And these compounds, short chain fatty acids, are actually the bacterial waste, the ba bacterial feces, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then we absorb these compounds and they um, regulate a number of different aspects of our biology. Um, in in uh, positive ways. So they increase the number of T regulatory cells. These are cells that attenuate inflammation, calm the immune system. So if you're not eating dietary fiber, it's likely that your immune system is operating in a hyperinflammatory state. Um, this hyperinflammatory state, it's believed, it can drive a lot of different types of Western diseases, ranging from autoimmune diseases, um, metabolic disorders, um, things like asthma, allergies, all of these problems that we associate with the Western world world are really really have excessive inflammation as an underlying mediator. And so um, it's um, not too hard to imagine how Americans that are not consuming dietary fiber, not producing a lot of short chain fatty acids, have this hyperactive immune system. And so dietary fiber is really a key to feeding this community and um, you know, uh, setting the immune system to a proper set point so that it's not too reactive. Now there's a really interesting connection between lack of dietary fiber and host mucus as well that um, maybe Erica wants to talk about. Yeah, so one thing that you know I wanted to add to that is you know, carbohydrates is such a loaded term in our society now. People view carbohydrates as something bad and you want to avoid. But broadly speaking, there are two types of carbohydrates we need to be aware of. The more simple carbohydrates, and like Justin was saying, these are the ones that are absorbed early in our GI tract. So these are things from highly refined grains or packaged foods, the ty types of simple sugars that are so prevalent in, in much of our Western diet. But then there's these complex carbohydrates, the type of carbohydrates that are found in dietary fiber. And these are things that you find in whole grains, fruits and vegetables. And these are the carbohydrates that the human genome is not very good at degrading, so that it actually makes it all the way down to our distal gut, to our colon, and then our microbes in our colon can ferment these complex carbohydrates and then um, produce the short-chain fatty acids that you were talking about. And so what we're finding is that when we don't eat enough of these complex carbohydrates found in dietary fiber, these gut bacteria are starving, and so they really are forced to rely on the mucus, the, the carbohydrates that are found in the mucus layer that lines our large intestine. And so as we don't consume enough dietary fiber, these microbes become closer to our mucus lining. They're eating that, that food because that's all they have to eat. And they're inching ever closer to our own epithelial cells. And that creates a situation in which, you know, the the human aspect of our GI tract and the microbial aspect, that, that fence that keeps them um, separated 
starts thinning and p setting up a scenario where the, our immune system now can start overreacting to these microbes encroaching and these microbes potentially get a little more aggressive because they're lacking in, in the food that they require. And then one thing that I just wanted to add, there's a lot of focus on the short chain fatty acids that are this major product of fiber degradation in the, um, in, by the gut microbiota in the distal gut. Um, but there's a, a variety of other interesting chemicals that these microbes are producing. Um, that, you know, um, bacterial metabolism is something that's really um, not studied well enough. And there's, uh, we can think of these, um, each bacteria in our gut as a little unsupervised drug factory that's constantly making interesting small molecules and interesting chemicals. Um, we don't know the identity of most of these compounds. We don't know how they affect our biology. They're circulating in all of our blood right now. They're slightly different between me and you, and they change in a single individual over the course of a day. And so understanding how these chemicals are impacting different aspects of our biology is one of the great frontiers of research.